So this is where the magic happens. In a carport where I have what is effectively a broom closet to hold my giant toolbox. Earlier this year, I thought to myself, you know what, used car prices are at an all time high. So now is the time to buy a drift car. In hindsight, probably not the best idea, but if you're debating making the same decision, this video is meant to walk you through the top five modifications I recommend for your drift car. I'd give a quick shout out to my sponsors, but of course I don't have any, so here's my wallet. I'm empty inside. Before we get into the actual steps, I do want to say that choosing a chassis, at least to me, is probably the most important part of the process. Some cars are better suited at drifting from the factory, some have better aftermarket support, and some even have some common reliability issues that you need to worry about. My recommendation starting out is to get a chassis that's frequently used within the community. I chose this Nissan 350Z. There's a ton of aftermarket support, ton of companies that make angle kits, suspension parts, parts to increase power, and so on. Another thing to consider before you really get into it is checking your local events. And most will have different requirements for safety that you need to meet. For example, if you drive a convertible, some events will only let you drive on track if you have a roll cage. Otherwise, it might be just simple things like having tow straps. Now, number one, is it going to make people groan, but it's maintenance. If you want a car that's going to run appropriately and not leave you stranded, you need to make sure it's properly maintained. Most of these cars that we're buying to drift are over 100,000 miles. They're probably not well cared for because we're looking for bargains, right? So you're going to be looking at replacing seals, gaskets, bearings, ball joints, so on and so forth. Because while those things might not seem like a big issue while you're putting the car together, once you get on track, little issues like that become big really quick. I've done about 15 events this summer and have beat the absolute hell out of this car. And the reason it makes it home is because I replaced pretty much every wear and tear suspension component. So getting into actual modifications, the first one I recommend by far is a welded diff. And it's gonna be kind of hard to see here because it's under the car and I don't feel like jacking it up. But your car from the factory likely comes with either an LSD or an open diff. And while an LSD is better for drifting versus an open diff, neither are ideal. With an open diff, you're basically gonna wind up spinning one wheel. While with an LSD, both wheels are gonna fight for traction, which is gonna create some unpredictability while you're in a drift. So having your diff welded, you have both wheels spinning the same speed. And while that does create some annoyance at low speed drivability, for example, making a tight turn and having your wheels kind of hop and chirp, the consistency benefit you get from that on the track is 100% worth all that. You can go with some more expensive options like a two-way diff, which I believe they generally run in like a $2,000 range. But if you don't know how to weld for maybe a couple hundred bucks, you can have a shop weld your original differential and be out on the track having a blast. The second thing I recommend are coilovers. As mentioned earlier, a lot of cars aren't maintained properly and if you're buying a car at 100,000 plus miles there's a pretty good chance that no one's ever replaced the shocks or struts before which means you're gonna have a bouncy shitty ride with coilovers you're gonna get a lower stance as well as less body roll and again more predictability which are all things that are extremely important especially when you're first learning how to drift and keep in mind some cars needed <laughs> And keep in mind, some cars need additional parts to make adjustments to the alignment. For example, the upper control arms on this car are not adjustable in terms of camber. Yeah, I have a neighbor looking at me right now, laughing in her car. Anyway, as mentioned, the upper control arms on this car were not adjustable from the factory. So I had to install some adjustable ones to get the right alignment specs or some good alignment specs for drift, which again, helps me get an ideal amount of traction and also potentially helps with tire wear. After you get the differential and the coilovers, my next big one would be an angle kit. And I've definitely heard some of the veterans recommend against that for people who are new to the sport. Essentially, if you have crappy your steer angle, I think it, it tends to make you a better driver. And if this clip is any sort of indication, this is my car with an angle kit and the car that I'm following had stock steering and he was absolutely kicking my ass. But yeah, having an angle kit definitely makes life easier. You can get bigger angle and you can definitely recover a little bit better if you've over-rotated. I mean, look at the amount of angle that I got from this kit. I opted for a full angle kit on this car, which basically was both upper and lower control arms, as well as some pieces that bolt to the hub. And that tends to be more expensive, but there are definitely cheaper routes where you can buy, say like a $200 angle kit that just bolts to the hub and gives you an extra, say 15 to 20 degrees, which is still significant. I started with that and eventually went to a bigger angle kit because I felt like I outgrew my original setup. And the last thing I recommend is a hydraulic handbrake, which you'll frequently hear referred to as a hydro. And again, there are a couple of different ways to do this or a couple of different versions. There are hydro kits that use a second caliper on your rear rotor. There are also some that are in line and leverage your original calipers. On my car, I have a dual caliper setup and you can see this giant lever in the middle of my center console here. And this is another one that veterans might recommend staying away from if you're just getting into the sport for the first time. And that's primarily because if you rely on it too much, it tends to create some bad habits. I've very much gotten to the point with mine where I only use it when I need to correct an angle or on really awkward entries where I don't have enough space for say a clutch kick or a feint or anything along those lines. Other considerations include an extra set of wheels. You can swap those out in advance. Generally, depending on the event, there will be someone there who's swapping out tires, but if you've only brought what's on your car, you're dropping your wheels and tires off to that person. And essentially you're stuck not drifting until they're done swapping your new tires in. For me, I burn out my rear set. 
I throw a new set of tires on, good to go. And there are a few different ways that you can go with tires. Some people go and they dumpster dive for used tires. Other people buy brand new. I tend to buy new just so I don't have to deal with raiding my local used tire shop for some scrubs that are in decent condition. Once you've got those things addressed, you can start thinking about other things like power mods. But I mean, there are guys out there with stock Miatas tearing up the track. So power is definitely helpful, but a lot more of that responsibility falls on the driver as well as the few modifications that I shared in this video, like the coilovers and welded diff. I'm planning to share another video down the road, which covers the actual costs for building this car. Spoiler alert, it was a sh load. And the car still looks like crap. But nonetheless, as always, I am absolutely happy to answer any questions. Feel free to post in the comments. I hate asking, but please consider liking and subscribing so I can continue growing this channel and continue having my neighbors think I'm psychotic. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. I feel like my neighbors are looking at me like, what the f is this guy doing? Which is probably understandable considering I'm standing in my driveway talking to a video camera.